And so in this world of big data, um, we need to think about how auditing will, will exist. And uh, the traditional boundaries of what auditing is uh, are not going to work on this particular environment uh, because the feeders are not going to be there and the systems necessary to support are not going to be there. Uh, let's talk a little bit what I call uh, the audit ecosystems. And then just to kind of clarify what the ecosystems is, Pioneer Search of Amazon have built cloud-based ecosystems that make content such as electronic books widely available. Even though the firm has its own EV, the Kindle, it has hatched a tablet computer too and has created apps and other software that let people get their digital stuff uh, on all sorts of devices. Uh, so what this means is that they have a store, they have a billing system, they have a wireless feeding system uh, that basically delivers to the device that they sell. So they complete the product by a whole cycle of electronic support. The same thing is true for, uh, for Apple and selling music, and the same thing Google has started complete this Motorola mobility and Google has put together a whole set of, uh, of products that they, they sell that are complementary. Um, it's difficult to conceive that in a world whereby companies have complete cycles, ecosystems, feeding, supplying, updating in real time, that we can go in and, uh, and physically audit uh, the facilities or physically audit uh, the data uh, of uh, these particular companies. Uh, and it's, it's reasonable to expect uh, that uh, most large companies will, be, will have some of the supply chains uh, on the cloud and uh, they'll have no paper records and uh, most of their activities will be electronic. Um, uh, as I said before, companies are based on big data and respond often on a close to real-time basis. And as I said before, uh, com uh, financial cycles are now what I call bi bipolar. Internal ERP-based management data respond close to real-time and accounts like uh, receivable, payable, etc. are close to real-time. Financial uh, reporting is quarterly and besides its distribution and comparative value, is pretty much useless. Um, uh, the continuous audit will need to be a highly formalized system, and uh, you can't really perform audits uh, at the manual uh, pace of a human being when uh, most business activity is at nanoseconds. So, we will have to kind of develop ways of auditing on a reasonably automated way. As I always say, uh, people act in seconds and tens of seconds and minutes and hours. Uh, machines act in nanoseconds or milliseconds. And so this is kind of a just totally dimensionally uh, incongruous type of coherence. And in order to do any kind of validity, uh, validation or valid assurance, uh, in a feasible way, we are going to need to, uh, to accelerate dramatically our auditing. Maybe not even call it auditing, maybe assurance is a bet, uh, better world. Um, uh, just going back to the, the, cont uh, in, the continuous audit needs to be highly formalized. Uh, and the work of these audits are like a control. Now, the traditional audit is a form of control, although people don't recognize that. The traditional audit is aimed at ex post facto catching bad activities and validating ex post facto that uh, a picture of the organization, measurement of the organization is accurate. This is a form of control. Is a detective, con is a determined control, uh, is a form to get better behavior. Um, 
as I said before, auditing will have to be performed on a semi-automatic basis or, and only the very high, more noble activities of auditing will be performed by humans. And obviously these human performed activities will be much, much, much slower than the basic, uh, uh, the basic uh, activities in the audit world. And the other thing is that uh, we are not going to, from one second to the other, create an automated audit. What we are going to do is progressively automate certain elements of the audit. Um, for this progressive automation, I have to issue a warning. Is automating manual procedures that are anachronistic will not help auditing, will hold it back. Uh, there has been uh, what some people argue as a great progress in auditing and uh, basically for confirmation work, which is com what is confirmation, is verifying if the uh, outside party has the same records that the company has. We, instead of doing it manually, now there is a company called confirmation.com uh, that actually allows you to do, do by email and matching. And everyone hails this as a great, great progress. Uh, I think it's good, it's an intermediate step, but it's not very good because you really should not be sending emails and confirming. There should be not such a work, it should be a verification. Full population against full population, database against database. I call this confirmatory extranets. What does that mean? Is that any time you have detailed records, in your company of a bank deposit or a bank withdrawal or a check, the bank that you act with should have that in their rec records too with very little time uh, phasing, maybe a day and the maximum dephasing of, of these activities. But these databases have to be able to match. It makes absolutely no, se no sense trying to uh, generate a subsample, send it to the bank, and then have some human over there going to the bank, look at the balances, and press a button and, and say, I'm sending your email back. So what I'm basically saying, that certain efforts of automation, the manual processes actually, instead of being good, they are actually holding us back. Um, now, the, this new audit ecosystem is difficult. You have to speculate what it is. Will it be embedded into corporate ERPs? Uh, will it generate audit evidence and will it evaluate it on a frequent basis? Um, now, how is it going to deal with the cloud? Uh, many of the audit activities are judgmental. Are we going to formalize this judgment? Um, how are we going to develop this judgment? How are we going to create knowledge? Um, and then, of course, we have to talk about new forms of audit evidence, basically comparing uh, operations with models of how the business should, should be behaving is uh, what we call the predictive audit. You create models predicting uh, the behavior of a system, and then uh, you compare if the system actually behaves like it was expected. Uh, you can, at that point, be collecting evidence of, um, of uh, variances, uh, what we call alerts or alarms, and accumulate them as new forms of evidence. Actually, there are many, many different forms of evidence that don't even fall at this moment in the standards. And then, of course, the next question um, is uh, this question of uh, how will the mo modern professional fit into this thing? because the current profession doesn't have the either the analytic or the IT skills uh, in order to be this automation expert. Um, on the other hand, maybe there'll be a third party that will be developed this. So I, I put together here a little vision of uh, what I call an audit ecosystem and some of the things that might be happening here. First, you see here in the lower cubes, uh, the business processes. Then the business processes are connected or are affected on top of the cloud. And while they are being processed, a whole set of audit functions uh, are being performed on a continuous basis or 
on an ad hoc basis depending on some kind of control procedure or protocol that you may have. Uh, what we call a cron here is a time activated activity. So this particular activity might act, uh, uh, be activated once a day, once an hour, once a minute, etc., etc. And the daemon is uh, also some kind of audit procedure, but activated by a logical event that f fires it up. And uh, as an example of some of these things is a, du a duplicate detection agent, uh, a, a flag that detects that some data wasn't automatically generated but was generated by a person, uh, a transaction monitoring agent, a population integrity agent. So these are things that might not be detectors of faults in the system but might be indicators of a potential fraud. And these things can may be made work together uh, by creating functions that are discriminant functions that give you a weighting of a potential uh, danger, a potential, uh, uh, let's say, safety f function of a particular transaction or a particular sub-account or a particular account. Uh, Although the words cooperating agent are lofty, in reality what we are talking about is a whole set of little analytic tests and maybe you add the values together and give a weighting schema and the ones that you have found as having a high uh, discriminant function uh, are good candidates to be examined manually or being pulled out for deeper automatic examination. At the same time, while these things are working, there is a whole set of um, transactions of the business entering to the cloud. And uh, it's uh, pretty traditional that in audits, uh, if particularly if you're trying to do with the whole population, uh, you are going to examine carefully the things that are entered in the system. So you are going to do this, some form of activity monitoring that will uh, see the things that are being processed, uh, examine uh, some of the characteristics, create discriminant functions on these characteristics, and make some decisions on uh, what are the exceptions, what are the things that are worth examining. Now, one thing to be uh, highlighted is the fact that these are millions and millions of transactions, millions and millions of activities, and uh, there is no human being that can review all of this. So there will be a tremendous need of uh, very stringent, very intelligent functions that will choose what needs to be examined. And uh, so there is a need of work on exception selection, finding out which exceptions are really exceptional. Uh, and these methods would actually pull out for a manual audit or for a more detailed automated audit, certain transactions to be examined. Uh, one of our PhD students, Yang Bam Kim, uh, worked on, uh, on the accounts, on the temporary accounts, transitory accounts of a bank. And basically the algorithm used was that a set of accounts were chosen as risky accounts and they are monitored. But uh, performing substantive analytics on those accounts on a daily basis would pose horrendous loads onto systems that they couldn't basically handle. So what it was done, he created analytics uh, that were using just summaries and distribution characteristics of the transactions of the particular accounts that would look on a daily basis uh, for variables on that particular account. If those variables would accumulate and create indexes that were suspicious indexes, that particular account day would be downloaded and more specific filters would be used in, in a lower platform. So what, what we basically was doing is using an algorithm to basically decrease a large data problem into a management manageable level problem. It is not expected, is not really reasonable to expect that we will be able to apply every potential audit, uh, uh, audit uh, routine that we have or even uh, a substantive number of them 
onto every transaction of large businesses in massive environments with unstructured data, structured data, and et cetera, et cetera. So intelligent routines, intelligent methods of managing the risk of these transactions will be very important. The other thing to think about it is that you not only need to choose uh, risk, you need to link risk of particular transactions to something that makes them more risky, which is quality of controls. So these three elements, uh, controls, quality of controls, uh, risk of particular events, which is correlated, not independent, to controls, and the actual value of transactions for the traditional audit needs to be pulled together into this uh, assurance ecosystem. Uh, concluding, um, uh, we have uh, worked on artificial intelligence and expert systems for several de decades, and it has kind of had uh, a lull in uh, its application. And I think this is the typical hype curve that we mentioned before, whereby it takes some time for hardware and software and uh, process experience to evolve to a point that particular applications are economically justifiable. And I think we'll need to put these type of tools together to support uh, the audit environment. I think if we don't do that, um, we will not never be able to cope with the mass of data that uh, we are facing, and we are not going to be able to put the quality uh, or analytics in place. And wh while you are at this moment in this course going to discuss uh, substantively a uh, whole set of audit analytics, you need to think that these audit analytics will have to find its way on this audit ecosystem. And you have to always finish this type of discussion, understanding that there are quandaries today that in any one of utilization analytics or in this uh, application of expert systems that we really don't know how to resolve and we need to do some serious thinking uh, and that we are living on an evolving paradigm.